category number two, story, direction, visuals. Brian, I'll start off with story. There wasn't any. No. <laughs> Brian, I'm like, what is going on? I, what are you trying to make me care about here? with some of these relationships here. I don't care. You tried, you tried, because it reminded me of other things you tried to pull off where we did care. And here we didn't. There were relationships forming that went nowhere. Brian. This, Brian, there was a point in the movie where I thought the movie was ending. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like over. Okay, I, I could go home now. <laughs> um, and then I started things ramping up again. I was like, oh, I, for I forgot about this Sabat dude. Yeah. Brian, did you ever say to yourself, like you've said to yourself in other movies that we've spoken about, Eternals, did you see a good movie in here? No. So I'm gonna butcher his name because it's got a lot of, a lot of letters. Adam Stiekeel is the lead writer on this. Um, checked his filmography and there it was the writer of Rampage back for another Dwayne Johnson vehicle always uses his people look I mean to me this is the worst part of this production um, if th this I would give zero stars to this is a zero star story yeah yeah it in terms of the biggest flaws, I would say number one is we talked about in the overall impressions how engineered this movie was. It did feel like this is a movie where they chose all the moments that they wanted to have and then told the writer backfill some kind of dialogue that will get us from point A to B to C to D to E. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's a tough assignment. Um, The dialogue is horrendous. It's wild. You know what's wild? It's like you and I are, are on TV. We are we are consuming Andor, right? And like we're watching that, and like you, it's like it's like two <laughs> different languages. It's like what what, what is like this is the same. I was like, industry. what did he say? <laughs> it's like, I'm serious. The writing's just terrible, man. It doesn't make any sense. The story doesn't flow anywhere. I, you know, I can't feel sorry for Dwayne Johnson because these, in the end, these are his people, right? This is his writer. His these are people he's worked with before, so he has to wear some of the blame for their conduct and their product. Yeah. But whatever we think of his performance, this script gave that character no chance. There wasn't a way, like, if you dropped 1991 Arnold into this role, he's not saving this script. He's not. Like, even yeah, with the yeah, charisma yeah. that he had, he's not saving, saving this it. script. Yeah, yeah. That's how you kind of, for me, it's always that. It's like, can I sub in the peak performers of whatever genre, and can I save this movie? And with the exception of only one character in this movie, there's no, no chance. Like, the dialogue is terrible. The lack. Listen, there are times when a sleek movie without backstory works. Like we talk about Predator all the time. Perfect example. The absence of backstory helps that yeah. movie. Yeah. But this movie, 
with all of its grand aims to launch all of these other characters and reset the universe in using a character in black adam who despite all of dwayne johnson's star power black adam as a character is not of the profile of batman superman yeah you know or a lot of the more top more like spider-man or whatever this movie required exposition it required backstory that was skillfully told to get you up to speed and invested yeah. so the decision for example to bring in the justice society and not once did we spend time on carter hall's thousands of years or many lifetimes we got cyclone one sentence about what happened to her Dr. Fate, who's an amazing character in the comics, nothing about yeah. his origins or his journey. To do that, that is insulting to fans of the genre when you do yeah. something like that and you yeah. doom all of these characters from ever having a chance to connect with their audience before they ever get on screen. Unconscionable in my mind. Yeah. To me, Brian, I saw a possibility, and it's all going to what you're saying right now, that exposition. You could have written a story that, yeah, had some action, but also had some sense of presence when, because... When Black Adam is 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 on is in any comic book panel, there's a sense of presence there, and a certain way that he sort of, that he acts, mm -hmm. sort of what like The Rock acts in the WWF, very yes. arrogant and very. We just got Dwayne Johnson, yo. We didn't get The Rock per se, because the the Black Adam is a certain type of individual. He has some sort of charisma to him but he's very arrogant and he's very like absolute and but they didn't do that brian the when we get to the parts that we liked hope maybe there's that we, we 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 saw some of the same things um but the, i saw a good I, I saw a good story in there but it's like and the only pieces of it, uh, uh, the rest of it was garbage. This movie is 45 minutes long. Take out all the slow mo, this movie is 45 minutes long. But that's this movie needed like 20 to 30 minutes less action and 20 to 30 minutes more character it's, development. Yeah. That yeah. would have been, but that's the thing. When you say, is there a good movie in here? I say no because I say, what I'm talking about doesn't exist. See, the difference to me with like something like Eternals is I see the ingredients in what they put on screen. It's just scrambled, it, but it's there. Yeah, this, yeah. I'm having to project doing something that isn't in the movie to try to save it. And that's why I yeah. say it doesn't, it doesn't have what it needs. And I don't think, I gotta be honest, the shallow level of some of these exchanges and the seemingly just ham-handed forcing of some very cliche stuff into this movie leads me to believe there really wasn't a lot of thought in the writer's room it really like to draw another parallel and this guy's obsessive so i'm not gonna he's not represented but like michael mann has a book out about heat which is like the prequel and the sequel to heat and i've heard michael mann talk about this so heat's a great movie it's a three-hour movie but if you talk to Michael Mann, he can give you the life story of every single character he created for that film. The point is he sat down and he thought about every character's arc from beginning to end, whether or not he shot it and wrote it into the script. Do not tell me that these people did that. They have no clue about what Carter Hall was really supposed to be. They handed Aldous Hodge a very slimmed down character that had zero backstory and zero development and they said here go with it like that doesn't go anywhere do you remember the scene brian where they're filming uh the boys uh, they're doing their movie yeah and they're right that's how this movie was made yeah bingo a hundred percent 
a hundred percent. And like, don't tell me that like, oh, we have grand designs. We saved that for the spinoffs. See, that's when you know you failed. When you're like, I'm already going to save it for part two and part three instead of giving you what you need in part one. It's dead to me. Never works. Yeah. The story, horrible. Like, this is the whatever we think of the rest of the movie the basement is here it's yeah. the, it's the script yeah all right so direction so joan collette's there like as i said when he was announced this is a guy who worked with rock before he did jungle cruise he's done some liam mason action movies he, to me he's like he's your classic like b-level action director and that's what i felt like we got like we got Zack snyder without the style this really felt like a, this really felt like somebody's amateur attempt to copy Zach, right? So Zach Snyder used a lot of slow mo, used a lot of lightning, he uses a lot of shaky cam, but it's an insult to Zach's talent to say this was a copycat of that because, like, even in movies that we don't care for, like I, BVS is the best example. The warehouse scene, Zach is still gives you that, like. <laughs> When it comes to amazing. a couple minutes of action, he is on the short list. He would at least get an invite to any audition to give you the best five minutes of action in any any movie. Because he, he's got that gift with a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, it's like, there's slow-mo, and then there's like, slow-mo. I was like, this was a, it, 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 I was like- too yeah. many scenes of that, yo. I was like, like instant replay. Yo, it was, it was, it was upsetting, yo, that I had to like, I, <laughs> it was upsetting. It was upsetting. like, really? I was like, oh my, really, yo? And it was inconsistent. So Man of Steel, which was a Zack Snyder movie. And I felt like the scene in the tomb was clearly stolen from Man of Steel, the way Black Adam moved the way he was dispatching the soldiers. Zack Snyder is a master of slow-mo. You, you know how many slow motion scenes are in Man of Steel? None, I think. Exactly. Because he made a choice visually about how he wanted to show the action, the action of Superman, Superman and the Kryptonians. And he wanted to show it from the perspective of humans. Yes. And he carried it all the way through the movie. Whatever you think of the film, that is a filmmaker who had a, a choice, a vision, and an execution. For them to lead with that for Black Adam's introduction and then splice it with super slow-mo, that shows you the mess. That yeah. shows you someone who's just who's just like, he's in the grocery store. I like this. <laughs> I like that. I like this. I like that. There's not a cohesive visual style that they want the character to embody. And as a result, it gets messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the slow-mo winds up being the defining trait of this very much, I think, to Dwayne Johnson's detriment. I mean, he's a pretty yeah. athletic guy. Like, use that. Yeah. Um, Cyclone, um, her slow-mo stuff was just a waste of time. What they did with her, that that, that poor, I mean, you can see her in, in, in the opening, um, in, the, in the, the premiere, and none of her pictures look like she's happy to be there because she didn't i don't remember any of her lines I, I i mean i don't remember her saying anything it was just her showing up and doing her powers and just being useless um yeah brian this is just a big mess yo it was just a big mess it was it, it was it was hard to watch what i did like i i i, I enjoyed watching them Again, we'll talk about the good stuff, but let's talk about a few good things about the visuals, Brian, because there were some good things. Yeah. You want to leave? Go for it. Um, Some of the shots of Black Adam in the air from a distance look dope. Agreed. When it was still and he's just floating. Floating. Agreed. Totally. Good flying effect. Yes. Honestly, haven't really seen that used since like original Superman way back in yeah. the seventies, and I yeah. thought it was it, good. That was good. Exactly, that was a good touch. Um, 
Some of the fighting sequences between them were cool. It was just uh, too much of it. It just kept repeating itself. It was like, what? didn't we just see this already? You, you you didn't like seeing the Dr. Fate <laughs> replication effect for the fifth time to which, <laughs> which point they said, wait, we got to have Hawkman do it because we already had Fate do it like four times. And the crystallization of when, yeah. when they tried to restrain Black Adam, they did it to this guy, Sabak. It was like, it was just a repeat of, of, of stuff over and over again. So yes, at first glance, these effects, some of these effects, some of these effects were visually horrendous, Brian. Oh yeah. Um, but when they worked, they kept on doing it. And so by the time it gets to the end, they're showing the same thing and it was just whatever. So I, I mean, it fits in the category of visuals. I thought the costumes were pretty good in this. Uh, yes, yes, I yes, thought, yes, I actually thought, especially like, they did a good job of keeping um, Black Adam's more comics accurate second iteration costume under wraps. And I thought even the first one that we've seen Dwayne Johnson promoting the film in, that was pretty good. But then they broke the second one out. I was like, oh, that actually looks a lot like the Black Adam suit from the com I was like, that looks quite good. Yeah. I thought Adam Smasher looked pretty good. Like just like- Me too, suit, I like Adam Smasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. aspect of him blowing up. I was like, this actually looks pretty seamless. I love yeah. Dr. Fate. I actually thought the the look of the helmet and like the costume when we actually saw it on him, um, I was a big fan of that. And even I got to throw the shout in here. It's a little touch, but the only good thing I have to say about Henry Cavill's reemergence is I like the color scheme. They brought back the classic. We'll talk about S, that. We'll talk about and that. And they brought back the curl in his hair. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that actually looks as close to comic Superman as we've had since Christopher Reeve first walked on screen. I said, so yeah. I thought by and large, the costume choices, there's a few misses, like Sabak is a disaster. Like, but that's not, that's Sab a CGI disaster more than a costume disaster. Sabak sounded like Napoleon Dynamite, you know? <laughs> it sounded, it's, you know who it sounded like? Um, it sounded like, Jim Carrey's character in in Living Color, the the wrestler, bodybuilder, <gasps> that's what it sounded like. It was, I was like, really, Brian? This was, oh my god! Man, no wonder was, he wasn't in the promotional material because that was a total loss. Th <laughs> that's why. That's why, because they knew he was horrible. Right. Not even the, the Brian. There was, there could have been some good come out of the 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 dude that put on the 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 crown. Crown, yep. They, 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 I don't know. Yeah, so he was a CGI disaster. But yeah, so I'd say costume design. I liked it. I thought they did. A good did it job remind of you of the Netflix show that 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 failed? Oh, uh, Jupiter's Legacy. Yes, yes, yes. A little yes, bit. Yes, that yes, also yes, had great yes, costumes. Yeah, yes, and, yes, and, yes. and shoddy CGI. Yeah, so <laughs> I thought the costumes were, You know, I actually thought visually, um, the I thought the the ancient Kondok scenes were, were not bad. I know that there was definitely like Echoes of 300 in there. Yeah. But like, you know, I... I could have spent a little more time there. If they wanted to really build out that origin a bit, there was something there. I don't know that they, like the the boy versus, you know, Dwayne Johnson as the dad, um, you know, I, but I, I kind of was like, I, I'm sort of digging this. I want to see a little bit more. I want to see this fleshed out. I want to see it pay off. And and like, so I thought that scene making wasn't bad. Um, I will say I got very tired. Um, we, we just spent too much time in the desert. Is that bad to see? <laughs> the movie just never left the desert. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I understand that that's where they wanted. There was to one part, story, Brian. But like, they, they, I think that they were like in the city. <laughs> they were in the city. They were all talking. It was Hawkman, Doctor Fate, the the woman, the, the I, I think the kid. It was the first time they got huddled up. I think it was after the battle. We cut away to another scene. Then we cut back to them at the same scene. And I'm like, we still hear you? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Brian, I was like, what are we doing here, yo? Oh my God. Brian, but the, 
those moments, Brian, where he's still. Well, one of the dopest parts, Brian, in this movie, when Black Adam catches the bullet and he says something in whatever language, yeah, the magic is weak. weak. Yeah. yeah. It looked dope. Yeah. I was liking what I was seeing. When he started talking English, that's it. That's why I was I was already I was already a little bit out of it already and just waiting to see the 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 other uh, horrendousness that was coming on. I mean, and my thing with that, like, look, it's like if if the story as a whole was strong enough, I could probably look past that glaring plot hole of how a dude that was entombed for five thousand years in another civilization could be wisecracking within ten seconds of looking at a couple of Justice League posters on the wall of a kid's room. But like, that's the kind of thing that when the rest of the story is so shoddy, it draws attention to loopholes like that, where you're just like, you, you got to do better. Like, you got to do better than that. Yeah, I, I would, I, you, you fix that easily by having the woman talk to this dude. And then, I don't know, he, he has magic. Maybe, I don't know, use magic to sort of, Something, just do something there. Don't just, just like, oh, he speaks perfect English. Has and a personality. Know. He, he, he knows the lingo. He knows sarcasm. He knows a catchphrase. Push Terminator. Uh, we'll get to, I want to save that for Dwayne Johnson because <laughs> I think you're on it. I think it's 100% okay. right. But so, um, yeah. okay. So I think we, yeah, I don't know. I was going to say, I mean, like, I think, oh, this falls in the category of like direction and visuals, but like you know, we talked about how in the Batman sound was a character, like basically its own character. Uh, mm -hmm. and it really became an asset to the film. I was surprised, quite honestly, like Smashing Pumpkins, really? Like they, they, the needle drops in this were really weird, I thought, for what they were, the mood they were trying to convey. Lord Balfe, who did the score, who generally I think is, is pretty talented, I didn't like the theme choices at all for this movie, either for the JSA or for Black. It was just too much. It felt like the movie was like very heavy, very like a very electric guitar, like just kind of bombastic. Like the, the sound didn't add for me, which I kind of thought like the sound might be a, a, a strong, a high point for a film like this. Nope. I, I thought it was actually confusing, if anything. So... You know that one. There was one time, Brian, that I laughed real hard, and it was when the they were counting down and they were going to shoot the guy, and um, he says one, and then she comes out and he, and he says, "You let him get down to one." <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Um, that scene with the car and the music, baby, come back. Yeah. I was like. Yo, Twice, three times. How many times are we gonna do this? Like, and like yeah. Michael Bay used that song in Transformers. Exactly, know. Transformers. <laughs> so. Come on, man. I'm gonna find a clip of that three o'clock high, or I think the movie's called Three O'clock, where Buddy Ravel says, "You didn't even try." Didn't even try. How's that feel? didn't even try yo anything so, else brian no i think i think for part two that's a good one i would say you know uneven direction terrible story but some good visual moments and that's why like i said it's not when i think back to like how horrible morbius was where like the morbius effects were just consistently awful um this is definitely a cut above there's definitely like you said i i think you hit it like when this movie was doing less it actually was doing more in, in a lot of cases. Brian, this is what I'm thinking. That's what I've, I've been thinking. This movie would have just spent two hours of him understanding his surroundings and whatever conflicts that he's going to engage in. I mean, you have the Eternity Stone. These dudes know how to hurt Black Adam. You can have one guy trying to run candle, whatever, right? But make him, don't make him sabak, right? Make him whatever. This dude is just 
you know, he was what, Black Adam for, how long was he Black Adam before he was in prison? Then it seemed like it was long. And then he was back out. He's like, I'm never, he's like, I'm never going to say this word again, except 30 seconds later. Why do you need to live? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Know, so it's funny, like, Eternium is one of those things where I'd be curious to people who don't follow the genre, what they made of that, because Eternium, that's not a rip, that's a thing, like, that's true to Black Adam's story, like, that exists, that's not, like, so, like, there's people who are like, oh, it's just, they're stealing crypto kryptonite, they're stealing vibrant. well, yeah, the comic did, but, like, in Black Adam, Eternium is the substance that can weaken him. The weird thing about that, though, was, like, this movie was very uneven with how it used that, like, yeah. so it takes the rocket, point blank it fells him from the sky but then he like he just takes this he takes a nap and he's good like yeah. and then later on he crashed his full force into an eternium wall but like that doesn't do anything other than just stop it like it yeah, was yeah. weird how that was a, yeah. again that's poor writing right but that's just a writer being like well okay black adam's unstoppable we need to have something that like slows him down for a few minutes great eternium rocket like but it doesn't carry the resonance that kryptonite does when it's used properly in the Superman stories. Um, so yeah, it just kind of like another loose end that's out there. If Black Adam would have, if the people behind Black Adam would have been inspired by the first Superman, we would have had a great Black Adam buy. I agree, but that's, I mean, Man. That's true of a lot of, in fairness, that's true of Superman too. If we could, if we could just time machine Richard Donner and all of his <laughs> friends and bring back Christopher Reeve, then we'd have an, a great modernized Superman as well. But um, no, well, I, we're gonna I we, we, we're gonna talk about that but, too. But even the, so, but the thing is, so even the Eternium thing, because I, I don't know how I would have written the scene, but like you know, Dwayne Johnson was so intent on getting his buddy Cavill back and getting Superman in and getting a Superman Black Adam setup. But if we were being, if we were being legit about, because Amanda Waller threatens Black Adam at the end. And like my inference from that threat, I guess, was that she probably has a lot of Eternium at her disposal. Which yeah. basically she's like, you set foot outside. It's like, so my thought would have been like, if you really wanted to do some linkages and some universe stuff would be like, I mean, the, the guy you want behind kind of the, breaking down the formula of Eternium and getting it into the right hands is Batman, it's not Superman. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, and if you wanted to do some flash of like, you know, Batman being like, you know, handing wall or something that's like, here, this is all you need to deal with this guy. That would have been more appropriate than what they did. But anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. But obviously- If they were world building, to, but- But Eternium is gonna be around, right? That that yeah. That is going to be around in the future of whatever Black Adam and the DCU becomes in addition to Kryptonite, so. I don't know, but it just, yeah. That was category two, story, direction, and visuals.